Kia ora, I'm William Ray. Kia ora, I'm Lee Madame McLaughlin, and this is the Aotearoa History Show. Over the next 14 episodes, we're going to run you through the story of these islands and their people. Lots of us go through life knowing bugger all about our past. And if you don't know what's happened back in the day, you're going to have a really hard time understanding why things are the way they are now. So that's where William and I come in. This show is going to reveal our history, warts and all. Some bits will make you super proud, others might make you feel pretty rubbish. Our history isn't just important, it's also super interesting. We'll look at what the country was like before people arrived, the treaty those people signed, the wars they fought, and the people who led the way. Explorers, innovators, prophets, warriors, diplomats. There's a lot of crazy stuff and we're going to take you through everything. We don't have time for everything. And we're going to take you through most of the important stuff. That sounds pretty doable. But we have to meet you back here right after the titles. Watu ngarongaro te tangata, toi tu te wenua. People will perish, but the land is permanent. This is a wakatoki, a Māori saying. It symbolises the importance of Papatuanuku, our land. Over this series, we'll talk about the generations of people who have come and gone. But first, we need to tell the story of the land that sustained them. Māori legends have a lot to say about the origins of the land and sky. There's the story of Ranginui and Papatuanuku, the sky father and earth mother, how they were forced apart by their child, Tane Mahuta, and how that separation gave space for new kinds of life. Then there's the story of the origin of Aotearoa, how the demigod Maui hauled up a great fish and how his brothers hacked that fish to pieces, carving out valleys and mountains and forming the shape of the land. These stories of powerful primeval forces have parallels in our modern understanding of plate tectonics. Tectonic forces have been around for at least four billion years, ever since the earth first formed. But the story of Aotearoa is relatively recent. I mean, recent in geological terms. We're still going to have to go back 100 million years. OK, so 100 million years ago, the old supercontinents of Gondwana and Laurasia were beginning to be torn to pieces. You can almost make out the outline of modern-day continents like Africa and North and South America. But down south, Australia and Antarctica were still fused together. The land which will one day become New Zealand was sitting at the eastern edge of Gondwana. But things were about to change. Superheated magma was rising up against the bottom of the crust, stretching it, opening up deep fissures and fault lines. Sometimes magma reached all the way to the surface, forming long chains of volcanoes. Eventually, a huge section of land broke away from Gondwana and went sailing into the Pacific Ocean. It was a brand new continent, Zealandia, Te Riua, Maui. This continent was enormous, about 5 million square kilometres. That's 18 times bigger than modern day New Zealand. And as Zealandia took off into the Pacific, it brought a whole lot of plants and animals along for the ride. Zealandia separated from Gondwana right at the peak of the Age of Dinosaurs, the Middle Cretaceous period. But this wasn't just the Age of Dinosaurs. There were lots of huge marine reptiles living in the seas around Zealandia. Just a quick bit of paleontological pedantry, ancient flying reptiles like pterosaurs and swimming reptiles like plesiosaurs are not technically dinosaurs. Dinosaurs are mostly land animals. We've found quite a few fossils of marine reptiles in New Zealand, like Mauisaurus and Tanifasaurus. Tanifasaurus? Yeah, I know, it's cool, eh? Tanifa. But actual dinosaur fossils are much rarer. Like, if you got all of Zealandia's dinosaur fossils together in one place, they'd probably fit inside a shoebox. Like we've got a rib from an armoured ankylosaurid, we've got a couple of vertebra from several different big meat-eating theropods, we've got a vertebra of a giant long-necked titanosaur, plus a few extra bones which we can't quite identify. Bro, are these your toys? Yeah, I get a new one every year for Christmas. Based on such limited evidence, it's hard to say much about what New Zealand's dinosaurs were like, but we can make a few educated guesses. 
Back in the age of dinosaurs, the world was much warmer. Antarctica was covered in forest instead of ice. But Zealandia was much closer to the South Pole than New Zealand is today. So our dinosaurs must have survived months in darkness every year. In these conditions, they might have evolved large eyes to see in the dark and thick coats of feathers to protect them from the cold. According to our educated guesses, our dinosaurs must have been pretty weird. Hopefully, we'll find some more complete skeletons in the future so we can confirm just how weird they were. OK, so me with the killjoy. Just like in the rest of the world, Zealandia's dinosaurs were driven to extinction when an asteroid hit the Earth around 66 million years ago in the Gulf of Mexico. This asteroid was about 10 kilometres across, and it left a crater 200 kilometres wide. Impact debris rained down all over the world and dust blocked out the sun for weeks. 80% of life on Earth died out, including all the non-avian dinosaurs, pterosaurs and giant marine reptiles. After the extinction of the dinosaurs, mammals quickly evolved to fill the niches they left behind. Mammals eventually became huge plant eaters and apex predators. Or at least that's what happened everywhere else in the world. What happened in Zealandia was very different. There were almost certainly mammals scurrying around in Zealandia when it separated from Gondwana. Mammals lived alongside dinosaurs for millions of years all over the world. But by the time Māori arrived here about 700 years ago, New Zealand's mammals had vanished. Today, our only native mammals are three species of bat, which seem to have flown here relatively recently from Australia. So what happened to the rest of our mammals? One theory suggests that at some point Zealandia slipped completely beneath the sea, so all our mammals drowned. But nowadays most scientists think there was always some land above the surface, which should have been enough to keep our mammals afloat. But still, something wiped them out, and we just have no idea what it was. It's one of the biggest mysteries of prehistoric New Zealand. Thanks to the lack of mammals, Aotearoa became dominated by birds most of which colonised New Zealand after flying here or after being blown across the ocean from other places. Once they arrived in New Zealand, these birds were safe from mammal predators, so many species lost the ability to fly and took on radically different body shapes. The most radical change was the moa. The ancestors of the moa originally flew to New Zealand from Antarctica, but over millions of years they completely lost their wings and grew much, much bigger. The largest moa could stand more than 3 metres tall and weighed more than 200 kilos. Some birds kept their ability to fly. Mostly these were smaller birds like the tui and piwakawaka. But there was one giant, the poakai or harst eagle, the largest bird of prey that's ever existed. The poakai was the only animal big enough to take on a moa. They would dive out of the sky and hit with the force of a concrete block thrown from an eight-storey building a concrete block with claws as big as a tiger. Meanwhile, the land was still changing. At first, Zealandia got stretched out and then it sank. Only a scattering of small islands were left above the surface. Then it was shoved up against the neighbouring Australia plate and a bit of crust right on the boundary was pushed upwards. The land we call Aotearoa New Zealand rose from the sea. It's kind of like the story of Maui and his great fish. There were also huge changes in the climate. Around 2.6 million years ago, the whole world fell into a series of ice ages. Glaciers grew over much of the central South Island, carving out huge valleys through the Southern Alps. Before the ice ages, Aotearoa was covered in the kinds of tropical plants you can see today in the forest of northern Queensland or Papua New Guinea. But by the end of the last ice age, about 18,000 years ago, those plants had been replaced by rimu, tōtara, kauri, lots of ferns, the kind of plants we see in the bush today. The huge glaciers in the South Island melted, leaving behind gigantic lakes like Wanaka, Te Kapo and Te Ano. But here's a funny thing about the ice ages. During the last ice age, sea levels were 125 metres lower than they are today. All the major islands of New Zealand were locked together in one big landmass. But global average surface temperatures were only about 5 degrees colder than today. That means every degree of warming over the last 18,000 years has translated to roughly 25 metres of sea level rise. 
Small changes in global temperature can translate to very big changes in the global climate. And that's why scientists are really, really worried about global warming today. OK, so that's the serious stuff. Now let's talk about volcanoes. Sitting at the edge of a colliding plate boundary means that magma often finds weak points to bubble up through the crust under New Zealand. And over the last two million years, one of those weak points has sat directly beneath the central North Island, the site of some of the world's most violent volcanic eruptions. The biggest was the Oruanui eruption. About 25,000 years ago, it blanketed the entire North Island in ash and molten rock, leaving behind the gigantic caldera which we now call Lake Taupo. The Taupo supervolcano has erupted many times, but the last explosion happened in 232 AD, about the time the Roman Empire was at its height. This was much smaller than the Oruanui event, but it's still the most violent volcanic eruption the world's seen in 5,000 years. It covered most of the central North Island in a thick layer of ash and pumice. Even a thousand kilometres away on the Chatham Islands, the ash fell half a metre deep. Lake Taupo is still an active volcano and it will erupt again in the future, but you don't need to worry too much though because it's constantly monitored by scientists and we'd get a warning if it was winding up for another big explosion. The final major change in New Zealand's landscape happened after 1290 AD. If you dig down into the earth in many parts of Aotearoa, you'll come across a thin layer of ash. But this ash didn't come from a volcano. It came from a series of huge fires which ripped through New Zealand's forest. These fires were lit by human beings, the first humans ever to reach Aotearoa. Who were they? Where did they come from? That's the story for our next episode. Thank you so much for watching our very first episode of the Aotearoa History Show. We've got a bunch more coming. We're going all the way from 100 million years ago up to pretty much the modern day. So make sure you subscribe at the bottom, give us a like, tell your friends about us. Hit that little bell icon and then you'll get notified about all of our episodes as they come out. Whoop whoop! Thanks for joining us on the Aotearoa History Show, produced by RNZ and made possible by the RNZ New Zealand On Air Digital Innovation Fund.